Hi guys, good afternoon. Today we will try to analyze step by step how to read a normal myocardial perfusion scan. So, uh, what is the workflow for obtaining the best uh, analysis of your scan? So, first of all, acquisition and reconstruction method, and you can uh, um, see a dedicated video in order to have all this information that are uh, very complex and uh, it's better to have in a dedicated uh, time. So, uh, we will try to analyze in this video how to make a good uh, reorientation of your uh, tomographic data, how to analyze the images that you have, and in some way, how to report uh, at the end the analysis of your uh, scan. But uh, first of all, I would like to underline again that uh, if you acquire very close to the ischemia time, so very close to the stress test that you perform it, you will have the best evaluation of the myocardial perfusion abnormalities after stress. So with the FAST protocol, see more, see before is uh, the best way to define the ultrafast protocol. So see more, see before, don't forget it. Uh, so after 14, uh, 15 minutes at, from the end of the stress, start your acquisition and then you will have the best um, analysis of your stress scan. And then we will start with the reorientation of the tomographic data. Uh, it's very important to this point because uh, uh, with the reorientation that can, you, can be performed manually or automatically, you will uh, have the uh, best way to analyze at the end your data that should be consistent between rest and stress. So how you can do it? The long axis orientation lines should be parallel to long axis walls of the myocardium. It's very, very important this point. So if you misalign it myocardial walls in the two studies, it can result in clinical misinterpretation. You can have a lots of artifacts. So this is an example. This is the way that you uh, need to perform, uh, that you need to use in order to have the best way to reorientate uh, your SPECT scan. This is the correct position of the axis. This is the way at the end you have the correct slices. Uh, this is the incorrect position because it's too much versus the septum and at the end your slices uh, uh, can turn it counterclockwise. And also in these ways is incorrect the position of the axis because it's too much close to the lateral wall and at the end your slices uh, can turn it clockwise. So you need to be sure that it is uh, very well aligned as we say before. This is the results of a normal SPECT scan that you can obtain it at the end. So which are the requirements? You need to have the uh, comparison between stress and rest. You need to have all the three axes, short axis, vertical axis, horizontal axis. You need to have the description of uh, the data that you have, stress, rest, apical, short axis, baseline, uh, vertical, septal, and lateral wall horizontal axis inferior in interior, because you need to be very well oriented in front of your scan. And these are the bullseyes. Uh, what are the bullseyes? The bullseyes are uh, two way, uh, to the uh, representation of your left ventricle. You can imagine in these slices, uh, your uh, ventricle like an umbrella, a closed umbrella. When you open the umbrella, you can have this type of uh, uh, representation. The apex is in the middle. Here you have the septal wall. Here you have the anterior wall. Here you have the lateral wall. Here you have the inferior wall. And you can have stress versus rest. Here you have the uh, short axis representation. The first row you have the stress analysis and in the second row you have the rest uh, analysis and from the apex to the basis. The, uh, the slices should be very well represented and very well oriented in uh, both uh, um, 
the analysis. Here you have the vertical axis from uh, stress and rest from the septal wall to the uh, lateral wall, as you can see here. And here you have the horizontal axis from the inferior wall to the anterior wall. Here you have the right ventricle. So this is a normal scan. You can have here the impression that the uptake of the tracer is very similar uh, all around the left ventricle. Uh, there is no difference in terms of uptake, uh, also in the quality, qualitative analysis. And this is the way that you can uh, evaluate your images. So you can obtain uh, uh, two different uh, uh, analyses. The first one is the vision analysis. So you can have a comparison of uh, the patient myocardial perfusion images uh, uh, that happens in your brain. So as you can see here, I can see that uh, uh, apparently there is no difference between stress and rest. It's very homogeneous, the uptake of the tracer in both stress and rest scan. But there is also another way so a quantitative parameters, that is a comparison of the patient myocardial perfusion images, that is uh, um, obtained after a database uh, normal uh, analysis uh, uh, that you have uh, uh, in your institute and it should be better. Or you can use the one uh, given you by the uh, um, software um, uh, industry that you use in your specific institute. But you need to be sure that there is a normalcy database to compare the scan that you have. Uh, how we can compare it? So here is uh, the normal stress. Uh, you can see here that there is stress, rest, and at the end you can have also the uh, difference between stress and rest. So you see that there is no difference in terms of uptake. You can have also here very nice evaluation of the vascular territories, LID, RCA, and LCX. But uh, probably it's better to understand how we can obtain a semi-quantitative analysis if we analyze an, an abnormal stress scan. This is an abnormal stress scan. Um, so you see here uh, stress, rest, and uh, the difference between stress and rest. So here is a zero, and here you can see a 100. This is a very big difference. What is a zero? Zero is related to the fact that in this um, segment, you have the maximal uptake uh, in terms of percentage if you uh, analyze the number of counts that you obtained in each segment. While here, in the middle, in the apex, in the 17 segments, you have a 100% reduction of the uptake if you compare to the maximal one. So there is a big difference also here, here, and here. While, for example, if you analyze the rest uptake, you can see that there is an improvement of the uptake after the uh, second ejection at rest. And uh, uh, the uh, reversibility maps can be able to uh, evaluate, in the reversibility map, you can be able to evaluate very well the difference between stress and rest because uh, uh, the algorithm automatically um, detect which is the number of counts in each segment after stress, a stress, and there is a um, difference, and so it automatically detects which is the difference, which is the percentage difference in the two scans, and at the end, you can have in a very simple way uh, the evaluation of this uh, um, score that is uh, like uh, in the ECO scan, like in the CMR evaluation, Zero is the normal uh, uptake, and four is the worst uptake. And you can have this uh, uh, for in each segment for stress and rest. You can have the reversibility map, and at the end you can obtain three different score. SSS means summit stress score. SRS means summit 
REST score, SDS summit different score. So uh, you can have the uh, number that is able in a very simple way to evaluate, which is the uh, area. How big is the area of perfusion abnormalities at stress, at rest, and which is the difference between stress and rest. You can have the same uh, analysis also in terms of percentage, as you prefer, is not a problem. Here, summit stress score is zero, summit rest score is zero, because it's normal stress scan. So uh, the worst uptake is uh, uh, obviously 68, that it's impossible to have, only in a death man probably you uh, will have uh, uh, 68, but uh, uh, you can uh, obtain also a degree in terms of normal and abnormal uh, amount of summit stress score. That it's very important to quantify because you can stratify the risk of your patient according to the previous published paper. And also in terms of evaluation of uh, risk uh, area or in terms of uh, extent of ischemia or perfusion abnormalities, it's very important to evaluate the uh, amount of SDS because you can stratify the risk of your patient. But we can have also the evaluation of uh, gated because we synchronize the acquisition with the AKG, so we can divide uh, each uh, uh, interval, each RR interval in 16 frames, and we acquired uh, the 16 different frames uh, every time, so at the end we can obtain the car, the systodiastolic curve, so we can have the evaluation of the gating images, and you can have the evaluation of stress and at rest. And it's very important because uh, uh, it's a real 3D evaluation. So it's not like an echo in the Simpson rule, but it's a real evaluation in 3D. So it's quite similar to the ones that you obtained with CMR. And due to this fact, if you analyze the uh, data obtained in several patients with normal and abnormal um, LV ejection fraction, you can have a very close relationship with the one obtained by uh, CMR. But you can have the evaluation also of the diastolic function uh, that is uh, not like in ECO, but is uh, related to uh, the volumes uh, in, uh, in times. So it's a peak filling rate. So it's evaluation of uh, uh, the um, elasticity of your ventricle. And it's very important, the normal uh, number for uh, discriminate normal diastolic function and abnormal diastolic function is 2.11 in uh, a patient submitted to CZT scan. I uh, uh, with respect, is 2.2. Uh, so it's a uh, uh, very close, very similar to this number. And it's very important because in this ischemic, in this chemical state, the um, abnormal diastolic function is uh, a little bit before that, uh, the abnormal uh, LV function, uh, systolic function. So if you have in patient with uh, an uh, abnormal scan in terms of perfusion, also a reduction of the systolic function, the risk of your patient is uh, uh, worse than uh, if you don't have also the uh, abnormal diastolic function. So you can have also the, poss the possibility to evaluate diastolic function. And at the end, uh, you can have also the possibility to evaluate the intraventricular dyssynchrony. That is uh, uh, very important, especially in patients, not only with LBBB, but also in patients with uh, uh, normal AKG, but especially in patients with uh, low ejection fraction, because probably uh, we can use these parameters for stratify uh, patient with uh, uh, low ejection fraction, for discriminate patient that uh, probably benefit more for CLT. So we need more data uh, for uh, uh, this kind of uh, um, uh, parameter, but it's very important to know that uh, you can use it for a uh, dedicated subgroup of patient. 
So at the end, uh, we can have the possibility to obtain uh, functional analysis, volumes, uh, diastolic evaluation, but also mass, because you obtain also the evaluation of the mass of this uh, uh, ventricle that you can use in patients also with uh, um, uh, heart failure, for example. And obviously you can uh, obtain uh, an absolute or a normalized mass. And at the end, you can use also the parameter of the synchronicity of uh, your ventricle. So a uh, lots of information for which only one examination. Not only myocardial perfusion analysis, but you can use all the parameters that you have in this ischemic cascade. So the first one, perfusion abnormalities, and then you have ejection fraction, diastolic function, mass, big pinley rate, and so on. So you need to use all of it to improve the final quality of your record. So thank you very much. And uh, we can have another video related to the abnormal perfusion scan soon. Bye-bye.